Mfalme Ben Hadad King Ben Hadad Alikuwa ni mfalme wa Syria He was a king of uh, Syria Na ukilinganisha kwa macho ya damu na nyama And when you compare with the eyes of flesh and blood Kipindi hicho Syria ilikuwa ina nguvu zaidi ya Israel During that time Syria was more powerful than Israel Kwa macho ya wanadamu When you look with your physical eyes Kwa hiyo tayari tunaweza ona kwamba hawa walikuwa ma giants Therefore we can already see these guys as giants Mfalme Ben Hadad alikuwa ni giant kulingana na mfalme Ahab. King Ben Hadad was a giant compared to King Ahab. Na majibu ambayo mfalme Ahab alijibu uh, Ben Hadad inaonesha kabisa kwamba alikuwa ameogopa na tayari amejiona ni grasshoppers. And the answers that the king King Ahab answered to Ben Hadad clearly shows that he felt himself as a grasshopper. Ben Hadad Ben Hadad Nilisha kuambia kila jina ambao utaiona inaanza na Ben something Ben manake son of I told you already that any name that begins with Ben it means mwana wa in Hebrews Ben ni mwana wa So Ben means son of Kwa hiyo Ben Hadad So Ben Hadad ni mwana wa It means son of Ni mwana wa a, son, Ben Hadad ni mwana wa Hadad is the son of Hadad Kwa hiyo ukisoma Hadad so when you read about Hadad kwa Kiebrania in Hebrew inamaanisha miungu it means gods miungu gods isiyofaa kwa sisi which are no good for us Kwa hiyo Ben Hadad so Ben Hadad ni mwana wa miungu is the son of gods Basi hii katika nchi ya Syria. So in this land of Syria, kulikuwa na Ben Hadad wengi. Ilikuwa ni jina ambayo iko common. There were many Ben Hadad. It was Lakini a common name. Lakini maana wana wa miungu. But wana wa miungu, sons, wana wa miungu. Sons of gods, sons of gods. Ni kama ngisi tunasema kulikuwa kulikuwa Herod wengi, kulikuwa yeah. Pharaoh wengi. Like the way we talk about Herods, there were different Herods. Kwa hiyo inaonesha kabisa hawa ni watu ambao walikuwa kulingana na jina tayari wameshajitoa kwa miungu yao So this clearly shows according to their name they had already given their lives to their Wako gods Wako tayari kuitumikia miungu yao They were ready and willing to serve their gods Basi unaweza ona chanzo cha uadui tayari kinaanzia kwenye jina hapo hapo So you can see the source of enmity already begins from the name Biblia inasema The Bible says Huyu Ben Hadad this Ben Hadad, mwana wa Hadad, the son of Hadad, mwana wa miungu, the son of gods, alituma ujumbe, sent a message. Ujumbe mkali sana. This was such a strong message. Na na alivotuma huo ujumbe, and when he sent that message, tayari amejipanga. He was already set. Ameshaomba marafiki zake wa falme 32. He had already asked his friends, fellow kings, 32 of them. Association kubwa sana. This was such a powerful association. Ya wafalme 32 you can imagine. 32 kings. Hebu fikiria hiyo. Wanatumika kwa pamoja. They are serving together. Wakivamia nchi going against the country. Wakivamia kabila. If they go against the tribe. Wakivamia ufalme mwingine. Going against another king. Ni hatari. It's dangerous. Kwa unaweza ona gisi alikuwa amejaa ile kiburi cha uzimu so you can see how full he was with the pride of life kwa hiyo basi huyu mfalme ben hadad wa sham so this king ben hadad of syria akakusana jeshi lake lote sio nusu lote he gathered all his hosts together not part of it all of it walikuepo wafalme 30 na wawili pamoja na yeye and there were 30 and two kings with him na farasi and horses na magari and chariots akakwea and he went up akausuru samaria and besieged samaria kwa hiyo waliizingira samaria so they besieged they surrounded samaria kwa maana nyingine ukiwa umezingirwa namna hiyo in other meaning when you are besieged in such a manner umekuwa mtumwa ya yule ambaye amekuzidi nguvu you have become a slave to the one who has overpowered you Unaiona hiyo picture? You see the picture. Mwana wa miungu, the son of gods. Amekusanya na wafalme 32. He gathered 32 other kings. Akachukua jeshi lote. And he took all his army. Akachukua mafarasi. And he took the horses. Akachukua 
magari ya farasi magari ya farasi the chariots akatuma ujumbe and then he sent a message baada ya ku ku besiege kwa after usuru. besieging the, 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 the city akaupiga vita and then he warred against it yani amejiandaa sasa vita now he was prepared for the battle amesha zingira he is already besieged samaria nzima the whole samaria ndio anatuma ujumbe now he's sending a message hii ilikuwa kama ku unajua ile zamani watu walikuwa wana watoto walikuwa wanacheza michezo ukitaka kuingia vitani unaanza pa unamkanyanga mwenzako bila sababu <laughs> you know those days when the kids <laughs> would, would play these games when you want uh, uh, to to fight against your partner what you do you first step on your partner's feet you just do pa and then you go, you una go back and then kama ana iko you 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 test the waters kama first kama anakuogopa tayari anakimbia if this person is afraid the person will run away akisha kimbia amekuwa mtu siku zote utamnyanyasa maana anakuogopa once he runs away he has become a slave to you because every day you will be on top of him because he's afraid of you lakini ukikimbia unamkanyaga ka but if you try to step on that person naye anakurudisha na kukanyaga ka and the person will will reply back unaanza vita then the battle begins si unajua hiyo michezo you remember those games eh kwa mtu anaweza akakuletea tu shida ile ya kujaribu kwamba wewe ukoje so somebody can just trouble you to check on on you how you are kwa hiyo akatuma ujumbe huo ujumbe ni kama kumkanyaga hivyo tayari kuanza shida so he sent a message that message is just like to step on that person or to the Bible provoke says akatuma wajumbe kwa ahabu mfalme wa Israel mjini akamwambia he sent a message to the king of Israel ndivyo asema asemavyo ben hadad he said that says ben hadad angalia uchokozi this is provoking akamwambia fedha and he told him hebu sema pamoja na mimi fedha yako so your silver kama kana kwamba haitoshi na dhahabu yako as if it was not enough and your gold sema na dhahabu yako your gold ni zangu mimi asema ben hadad it is mine says ben hadad sikiliza kama kwamba haitoshi as if it was not enough na wakezo and your wives na wanao and your children walio wema the, the good ones kwa kiingereza wanasema they say that and thy children even the goodliest ehe uh-huh. ni kwamba wale wanawake wenu wa, wa, wa sio tu wa mfalme na wale wa baba wote walio ndani ya Samaria kila ambaye amemwoa mke mzuri huyo mke anachukuliwa what ben hadad was saying not only the wives of the king <laughs> even the wives of all the men in Samaria they are mine na watoto and the children sio wote not all wale wazuri wazuri wenye nguvu waliosoma wan, ambao ni watu wa yani wana, wana thamani fulani those good ones the ones with value those are mine wote ni wangu they are all mine hebu rudia pamoja na mimi <laughs> repeat with me fedha zako <laughs> your silver na dhahabu yako and your gold ni zangu mimi it's mine na wake zao and your wives na wanao and your children walio wema the goodliest ni wangu they are mine hiyo ilikuwa ni kumkanyaga kumchokoza that was provoking hata kama angesema fedha tu ni provocation tayari even if you don't only mention money that is sasa a anasema fedha na he saying na dhahabu silver wake wenu wazuri gold, watoto wenu wazuri wives, wote ni wangu good children they are all mine sikia sasa grasshopper mentality now listen to the grasshopper mentality mfalme wa israeli akajibu akasema and the king of israel answered and said ni kama ulivyosema bwana wangu my lord o king according to thy saying ni kama ulivyosema bwana wangu mfalme my lord o king according to thy saying mimi I ni wako am thine na vyote and all that nilivyo navyo I have unaona hiyo jibu yours you see the answer god forbid mungu aipushilie mbali kwanza wamezingirwa number one, they are besieged na jeshi lote and the entire army farasi horses na magari ya farasi na magari ya farasi and the chariots yani jeshi zina silaha the army has weapons na amejiambatanisha na wafalme wengine 32 and he has a company of 
32 other kings. Ambao nao hawakuja peke yao. And they also did not come alone. Nao wamekuja na nguvu zao. They have come with their armies. Kamji yako ka Samaria jamaa. Just that city of Samaria. Unaiona hiyo picha? Do you see the picture? Ni rahisi sana kusema kwamba huyu mfalme alikuwa na 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 grasshopper mentality. It is very easy to conclude that this king had a grasshopper mentality. Lakini ukiangalia ukweli but when you look into the reality hata inawezekana na sisi tunakuwa katika hali ambayo tunaona hatuwezi it is also possible that we are also in such situations whereby we feel we are not able kwa hiyo sio kwamba alitaka and it is not that he wanted lakini ni kwa sababu ya huo utumwa aliokuwa amewekwa ndani kwanza tayari amekuwa besieged amezingirwa na adui mwenye nguvu zaidi yake alafu anatumiwa message kama hiyo ilizbidi ajibu kwamba bwana wangu mimi na vile nilivyo navyo vyote ni vya kwako it is because of that situation of being enslaved he had no any other means because he was besieged and now he's being sent a message and then the only thing he could reply because of the situation is to say my lord i and everything that belongs to me is yours point ya kwanza ni hii point number 1 is this ukimupa adui nafasi hata kama ni kidogo if you give a chance to an enemy even if it doesn't matter how small it is and if you agree with him in that stage it doesn't matter how small it is know that the enemy will not be satisfied it's okay you can you, you can take it the enemy will not be satisfied even with that small option you've given him because you felt that you're strengthless and you said okay just take Mana, it the small one. the moment he stepped on you like this and he saw that oh you're moving away and then he said let me add more then he would take more than what you have accepted you know what the way king ahab answered he saw that okay we are your slaves yani sisi ni watumwa wako that we are slaves to you lakini kumbe haikuwa naishia kwenye utumwa but the fact is it was not ending at the level Alivo of slavery alivyo kiliko basi sisi ni watumwa wako when he confessed that we are your slaves tayari yeye ameshajiona ni mpanzi he had already felt himself as a grasshopper lakini mfalme akasema but the king said ina maana ukunielewa vizuri ah you have not understood me hujanielewa vizuri you haven't got me najua nyinyi ni wakwangu I know your mind. Najua fedha zenu ni za kwangu. I know your silver is mine. Na dhahabu yenu ni ya kwangu. And your gold is mine. Wake wazuri ni wa kwangu. Your beautiful wife is mine. Watoto wazuri ni wa kwangu. Good children are mine. Lakini message sio hiyo. But that is not the message. Message ni kwamba The message is kesho this. tomorrow. Ninatuma watu. I'm sending people. Waje wavichukue. That they may come and get them. <laughs> sio tu kwamba okay eh hey, wewe unatutawala vitu vyote jinsi tulivyo ni vya kwangu. Ah uh-uh. ah sasa naenda kwenye action natuma watu waje waingie manyumbani kwenu wakague kila kilicho kizuri hata It, kama ni wengine wametuonesha frame na hata kama ni frame nzuri wachukue dhahabu wachukue fedha wachukue it was not only about the statement of saying that your silver your gold your wives your children are mine no it is about now sending people the next day to come and possess these things get them literally get them akiingia kwenye nyumba when they come and enter into your house akiangalia mke wako when they look unto your wife ah huyu hafai ah no this one akiingia kwenye nyumba ingine and he goes to another house akimwangalia look to your wife huyu pitisha huko ah this one this one is good ule naye wa kwangu that one is ana macho malenge huyu akae ah this one has crossed eyes watch you huyu Huyu this one ah huyu anachomba mwache Mwache huyu yeyote aliyekuwa na karama ya uzuri anachukuliwa whoever who had a gift of beauty is not yours anymore na fedha and money na dhahabu and gold na watoto and children ilikuwa ni hatari this was dangerous mfalme ahab alivyoona hivyo when king ahab saw this akaita wazee 
He called the elders. Akasema mambo yametuangukia mabaya. He said now things bad things have been said. What do you say? Mfalme alikuja akaniambia hivi. The king came and told me this. Kumbuka tumezingirwa. Remember we are besieged. Am na association na wafalme 32. He has associated himself with 32 other kings. Alinitumia ujumbe wa kunitishia. He sent this frightening message. Na mimi nikamjibu namna hii. And I replied to him like this. Sasa anasema Now he said. Anakuja kutia kwenye action. He is come to take action. Wake zetu wanachukuliwa. Our wives have been taken Watoto away. Watoto wetu wanachukuliwa. Our children are going to go. Pesa zetu zinachukuliwa. Our money is going to go. Dhahabu inachukuliwa. Our gold is going to go. Unasemaje? What do you say? Wazee wakasema the elders say jambo ambalo naomba uliandike This is something please write it down Wakamjibu wakasema and the elders usisikie unto him and said Usisikie do wala not, usikubali Do not listen to that neither do not accept it Na mimi nakwambia and I'm telling usisikie you Usisikie do not listen to it wala usikubali neither do you accept it Geukea mwanzako Turn to your neighbor. Mwambie usisikie hayo maneno. Tell your neighbor don't listen to those words. Usisikie hayo mashambulizi. Don't listen to those uh, attacks. Wala usiyakubali. And don't accept them. Hivi mnajua kanisa tumenyanganywa vitu vingi. Do you know that a lot of things have been taken yani away from the church? Yaani na maanisha kanisa kama mwili wa Kristo. I mean the church as a body of Christ. Wana wa Mungu tumenyanganywa vitu vingi. This uh, children of God a lot has been taken away from Hatuna us. Hatuna pesa, hatuna dhahabu. We don't have gold. Tunanyanganywa tu siku zote. Everything has been taken away from us every day. Tumekuwa kama watumwa bado tuna Mungu lakini tuko kama watumwa. We like slaves. We have gold but we are slaves. Hii hali ipo. This situation exists. Adui anakuja kunyanganya pesa zenu. The enemy comes to take away your silver. Anakuja kuchukua vitu vya thamani. He's coming to take your valuable things. Ili tubaki tu tunalia e Mungu wewe. So that we may just be crying every time. God help me. God help me. Lakini agizo linasema usisikilize wala usikubali. But the order say hearken not unto him no consent. Hayo ni majitu. These are giants. Lakini kuna Mungu wa majitu mbinguni. But there is a mighty God of giants. Kuna Mungu wa majitu mbinguni. There is a mighty God of kuna giants. Kuna Mungu anayejakutisha majitu. There is a God who knows how to subdue the Wayo, giants. Kwa hiyo kama una Mungu So if you have God. Kama nina Mungu. If I have God. Sitakiwi kukubaliana na hali kama hizo. I'm not supposed to accept those situations. Sitakiwi kukubaliana na hizo hali. I'm not supposed to accept those situations. Akasema. And he said. Nenda umwambie. Go tell him. Hiyo ya kwanza. That first one. Nilikuwa nimekubali. I had accepted it. Lakini ya pili rasmi rasmi nije kuchukua. But this second one that you're coming to take my things. Tell him I said no. Nimekataa. I have refused. Mfalme mm. akasema, "Eh?" And the king said, "What?" Amesemaje? What did he say? Akaendea wale wafalme 32. He went back to his uh, companions Na majeshi yote. And and tell him, "Tunaingia vitani." And said, "We are going to war." Jambo la kushangaza. An amazing thing. Waendea kwanza. When he went to them, alikuta wanakunywa pombe wamelewa. He found them drinking and they were drunk. Wameshaanza kusherekea kabla vita haijaanza. They started celebrating before the battle began. Samaria kadoncho hivi. Samaria just a small city. Wanajeshi wake wachache hivi. And the armies were very small. Wameshaanza kunywa pombe. Those guys started celebrating. Wamelewa. They were drunk. Akashuka kaambia. And he came and told them. Jiandaeni tunashuka vita. Get ready we are going to fight. Akatuma ujumbe wa tatu. And he sent the third message. Akasema umesema nini? He said what did you say? Akasema and he said Mwambieni. Ah ah Ben Ben eh <clears throat> Kwa hiyo akawaambia wale wajumbe wa Ben Hadad Mwambieni bwana wangu mfalme kila ulichotuma kumtakia mtumwa wako msikia mtumwa wako eh mtumwa wako kwanza nitafanya ila neno hili siwezi kulifanya hilo la pili sasa basi wajumbe wakaenda zao wakamrudishia maneno hayo ndipo Ben Hadad akatuma kwake akasema miungu anaapa sasa kwenye jina lake na miungu yake yote akasema miungu wanifanyie hivi na kuzidi yakiwa mavumbi ya Samaria hayatatosha wakonzi ya watu wote walio miguuni pangu Mfalme wa Israeli akajibu akasema sikiliza mwambieni avaaye asijisifu kama avuae <laughs> From verse 
Wherefore he said unto the messengers of Ben Hadad, Tell my lord the king, all that thou didst send for to thy servants at the first I will do. But this thing I may not do. And he said, and the messengers departed and brought him a word again. And Ben Hadad sent unto him and said, The gods do so. Now he's swearing by his gods. The gods do so unto me and more also. If the dust of Samaria shall, shall suffice for handfuls for all the people that follow me. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let not him that giddeth on his handless boast himself as he that putteth it off. Sikileza kwa kingereza version yangu nasema, Let not that one who puts on his armor boast like the one who takes it off. Na yule avae sila asijisifu kama yule avae. Umeipata hiyo? You got that. Mwambien avae asijisifu kama kwa Kiswahili hawajaeleza ile sana. Yeah, in Kiswahili it is not explained well but I'll translate straight from this version that Kwa Kiswahili nasema avae asijisifu kama avae, yani wanaona kama ni nguo. Yeah, in Swahili Lakini kwa Kiingereza clothes but in English it is talking about the weapons. Yani avae nguo za silaha na weapons na ile ile uh, 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 ile mavazi eh mavazi ya vita huh? yani ambaye anavaa ili aende vitani okay. asijisifu kama yule ambaye amerudi vita imeisha anavua sasa amepata ushindi anavua the meaning is the one who prepares to go to battle he puts on all the armor should not boast as the one who has, has returned from the battle now he's shedding off all his armor unanielewa you get me Nikomba now nikomba mtu anayeenda vitani anavaa you know, zote. The one who goes to the battle puts on all the Akipiga armor. Vita, Once he fights the battle, akishinda, if he overcomes, hai, he comes back alive. Kusema, ah, vita now he can say, oh, vizuri. we have overcome Kwa the battle. Anavua nguo, now he's a, taking off ale, a, a, his oge armor a that he may eat and take bath and rejoice. Wa Israel, In other meaning, the king of Israel told him, don't don't boast before you have entered the battle. Because nothing will assure you that you're going to be turned alive. In other words, the one who fights the battle and overcomes is the one who's supposed to boast. In other meaning, you're not supposed to boast yourself before you enter into the battle. It's like you're announcing the results before the results have even Kwa been kama ni ule mchezo, na ya In other meaning, if it is that game, it was also provoked. Kama ni if it is the battle, let's Siko go battle. I'm not ready to let my Siko silver go. I'm not ready to let my gold Siko go. I'm not ready to let my Siko wife go. Wake wa watu wangu. I'm not ready to let the wife Siko of my people wacha go. Wacha wangu. I'm not ready to let my Siko children go. Wacha wangu. I am not ready to let the children of my people go. Nini? What does it remind Wakati the time Israel walikuwa wana negotiate na Farao wanasema okay nyinyi yes. muende lakini muache hiki na hiki na hiki Israel was negotiating with Pharaoh for say okay you go but leave this behind leave this behind Acheni mifugo yenu leave your cattle Acheni watoto wenu leave your children behind Acheni wake wenu leave your wives behind Alafu niende huko muabudu Mungu Then you go and worship your Musa God Musa akasema Hatuache waki wetu We are not leaving our wives Hatuache watoto wetu We are not leaving our children Hatuache mifugo yetu We are not leaving our animals Roni hizo hizo the same spirits Ni kama ule mwimbaji anasema chukua kila kitu uniachie Yesu eh It's like the singer say take everything and leave me Jesus oh Itakavyo chukuliwa utaanza utakumbuka kama wewe mwenyewe ulitamka When everything is taken that's when you remember you are the one who said it Fedha na dhahabu chukua kila kitu chukue uniachie Yesu Take gold take silver take everything that's leave me Jesus That's a wrong statement Hiyo ni kauli ambayo sio sahihi Sema na fedha na dhahabu Na kila kilicho cha bwana ni mali ya bwana. The Bible says silver and gold and everything that belongs to the Lord it is the Lord. Na kila kilicho ndani ya dunia ni cha bwana. And everything that is on earth is the Lord. Na kila kiumbe chini ya dunia ni cha bwana. Every creature under the sun belongs to the Lord. Kwa hiyo 
mimi nitaokoka therefore i will be delivered na aliyeumba mbingu hii ni mungu ni baba yangu and the one who created this world is the father who's my god aliyeandaa kwa ajili yangu ni ya kwangu and the things you prepared for me they are mine tusiwe tayari kusema kwamba niache kila kitu niache wokovu let us not be quick and ready to say leave everything and take everything and leave me salvation lakini tuseme nikitafuta ufalme wa mungu hayo yatanifuata but let's say that if i seek the kingdom of god these things shall follow me Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Basi tunaona hatua kwa hatua. So we see step by step. Mfalme Ahabu akaanza kujiondoa ile roho ya ya, ya kujiona kama panzi mbele ya huyu bwana. King Ahab started to separate himself from this spirit of seeing himself as a gross sopper before King Ben Hadad. Akasema nenda umwambie. He said go tell him. Avae silaha zake. He who puts on his armor. Asijisifu kama yule ambaye amevua. Let him not boast like the one who has removed. Kwa nyingine tuko tayari. In other words we are ready. Uko <laughs> tayari? Are you ready? Nakuuliza uko tayari? I'm asking you are you ready? Uko tayari? Are you ready? Uko tayari? Are you ready? Hebu nione mkono wako kama uko tayari. Let me see your hand if you're ready. Ah. Ukisha uonesha utayari. Once you show that readiness. Ukisha uonesha utayari. Once you show that readiness. Mungu atakuonekania. God will make sure that he will be seen of you. Maana Mungu because God ameona kwamba he has seen that. Uko tayari. You are ready. Lakini ukikubali utumwa but if you accept slavery na uka uka, 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 uka settled and if you uh, you say that ukakubaliana nao if you embrace it and accept Mungu ametuumba katika uhuru. God has created us in freedom. Lakini ukiwa tayari, but if you are ready, kupambania haki yako, fight for your rights. Mungu atakuonekania. God will fight for you. Hallelujah. 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 Tutamwogopa adui mpaka lini? Until when are we going to be afraid of the Na kumuita kwamba ni bwana wetu. And to call him as our lord. Sisi ni watumwa wako. We are your slaves. Na masharti yataendelea kuwa magumu. And he will continue to tighten even those uh, 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 all, all the, the the commands that he gives against us. Alivyo mfal Ben Hadad alivyosikia hivyo. When Ben Hadad heard so. Wakavaa they got prepared washuke vitani so that they may go to war sikiliza nikwambie listen let me tell oh mungu wa mbinguni ni mungu wa ajabu god of heaven is an amazing god mungu atuwezeshe tuiondoe hii grasshopper mentality may god enable us to get rid of this grasshopper mentality atuondolee hii hali ya kuona sisi ni mapanzi na kuwa tayari kuona kwamba kabla ya vita umeshaona mimi nimeshindwa may he remove this uh, condition of us feeling that we are grasshopper even before the battle we feel like we have we are defeated siku zote uta utamuogopa adui siku zote utakuwa unaishi katika hofu ya manyaso ya adui jua kwamba utashindwa lakini siku utajua kama Mungu wa mbinguni ni baba yako na siku ambayo utakataa hofu na mashaka Mungu atashuka maana utakuwa ni mwana wa Mungu every day you live in fear you'll be defeated but the day you will realize and accept that the god of heaven is your father That is the day you're going to live in victory and God will be your father. The problem you are afraid of has power over you. The problem you are afraid of has power over you. Lakini but muda umefika the time has come wakujua kwamba Mungu alisema nitaingia kwenye mstakabali wa maisha yangu kuingia nitaingia to know that God has said I will enter into the destiny of my life I will definitely enter. Hayo majitu ambayo yamejitia hapo barabarani kunivu, kunizuia kuvuka Mungu ni Mungu wa majitu atayatimua yote. The giants that have intercepted along my way to stop me and hinder me from crossing over God is a God of giant he will get rid of all of them. Na njia moja wako ya kupambana And one of the ways to fight ni kulitia jina la Bwana. It is to call upon the name ni kuomba. of Bwana. It is to pray. Ni kufunga ikiwezekana. It is to fast if possible. Wakati tunafunga na kuomba, as we are fasting and praying. Ni kwamba tunamwambia Mungu sisi hatuwezi lakini wewe unaweza. Is that we are telling God we cannot do it but you can. Ni ishara ya kunyenyekea mbele za Bwana. It is a sign of humility Kusema before the Lord. Kusema Mungu. To say God. Haya majitu siyawezi. I cannot make it against this. Lakini wewe giant, unayaweza. But you can. Naomba unipiganie. Please fight for me. Naomba unipiganie. Please fight for me this battle. Hallelujah. Amen. Naomba, please uingilie kati. Intervene. Hiyo ndio maana 
ya kulitia jina la Bwana. That is the meaning of calling upon the name of the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Na tunavyofanya hivyo, and as we do so, ndipo tunajitia katika ule mstari wa warumi nane, mstari wa 31 kwamba Bwana akiwa upande wetu. That's when we put ourselves atakaye kuwa juu yetu. That's when we put ourselves in Romans 8:31. If the Lord is on our side, who can be against us? Sisi tunapenda tukusema Bwana akiwa upande wangu ni nani atakuwa kinyu? Lakini Bwana anakuwa upande wako namna gani kwa njia gani kama sio kumuita wakati mambo ni magumu na kusema bwana niwezeshe we just love to recite that verse if the lord is on my side who can be against you but how does the lord be on your side on, in what ways kwa kiingereza wanasema vizuri if in english inaweka ile neno kama au wanasema ikiwa lakini ni kama kama if if kama kwa hiyo hiyo ni condition tayari hiyo tayari kama kuna charge ya for us ikiwa kama Mungu yuko upande wetu who can be against us nani awezai kuwa kinyume nasi ni lazima bwana awe upande wetu so it is a must that the lord should be on our side na bwana atakuwa upande wetu namna gani and how will he be on our side wakati yesu mwenyewe alisema kwenye matao 26 mstari wa 41 wale waliokuwa kwenye maombi walis watch and pray whereas jesus himself said in matthew 26 verse 41 those who were in prayer said ebu mkesha na kuomba kesheni na kuomba watch and pray hiyo ni yesu alisema that is what jesus said kwa hiyo sio kwamba tunapoteza muda tunavyoomba it is not that we are wasting time when we pray sio kwamba tunapoteza muda tunavyokesha not that we are wasting time when we watch tunalitia jina la bwana we are calling upon the name yeah, of the lord yeye niite nami nitasikia he will say that call unto me and Nita i will answer mambo magumu sio yajua show you great and mighty things that thou know not hallelujah amen yeye yeah, ni mungu ambaye yuko tayari kushuka vitani tunavyomuita he is the god who's ready to come when we call upon him tunavyokataa kuomba When we refuse to pray. Shindwa kuomba. When we fail to pray. Shindwa jina la when we fail to call upon the name of the Lord. The giants will destroy us. Nguvu zaidi yetu. They are so powerful than us. Wafalme na mbili. Think about this 32 kings. Kwa ni hali ngumu sana. This was such a tough Ambao situation. Damu na nyama where my flesh and blood would not be able to win. Listen let me Mungu tell you. When God saw the readiness. Na and when God sees the readiness. In you, kwa neno lake. He comes by his word. Siku hizo ilikuwa ni siku za manabii ndio wanaongea na Mungu. Where the days of prophets were Lakini sisi tuna bahati, tuna baraka today, ya kuweza kujua kuongea na Mungu. We have a blessing to know how to talk to God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Huyo Mungu alivyoona hiyo attitude. So when God saw that attitude ya kusubutu of these people ya utayari readiness akatuma nabii wake he sent his prophets nani anataka kujua nabii alisema nini who wants to know what did the prophet say hallelujah 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 mungu akatuma nabii wake god sent his prophets nabii akamwambia and the prophet told him mfalme uishivyo as 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 you leave o king kama unaona ule ukuu wa majeshi haya if you're looking under the greatness of that army aha uh-huh. Natazama nabii akamjia Ahabu mfalme wa Israeli akasema Bwana asema hivi je umeona makutano hayo yote yaliyo mengi hata Mungu anajua ni mengi sana vitu vinavyotukabiliana ni vingi sana hata kuvihesabu ni shida And behold there came a prophet unto Ahab, Ahab king of Israel saying that says the Lord has thou seen all these great multitudes even God knows that the multitudes are great he knows that we have a lot of problems a lot of things that are surrounding us Umeona makutano haya yote yaliyo mengi? Have you seen all these great multitudes? Piga mstari angalia. Underline there. Behold. Nitawatia leo mm. mkononi mwako. Mm. Nawe will... utajua ya kum... ndimi Bwana. I will deliver it unto thine hand this day and thou shall know that I am the Lord. Shangilia Bwana kwa hiyo neno. Hebu mpigie Bwana makofi. This day Mungu akasema unaiona hayo majeshi yalivyo mengi sana. God is saying, have you seen all these great multitudes of armies? wingi huo wa ushambulizi. Do you see this multitude of forces na that are against you? unaiona hayo yote yanayokabiliana na wewe? And I'm telling you, are you seeing all these things that are against you? Bwana asema hivi. The Lord says so. Nitawatia leo. I will deliver them to into your hands. Wewe uliyelitia jina la Bwana. You who's calling upon the name Wewe of the Lord. Wewe uliyekabiliana 
na vitu vingi. Bwana anasema unaviona hivyo vyote. Leo vinaanguka chini. Leo vinaanguka chini. Leo vinaanguka chini. They will be pulled down today. Leo vinaanguka chini. Today they will be pulled down. Huyu Mungu ni ajabu. This God is amazing. Nacho kipendea huyu Mungu habadiliki. What I love about this God is never changing. Nasema Mungu aliyepigania Israeli kipindi cha Ben Hadad ni wewe ndio Mungu tunayekuhitaji. Say God you who fought for Ben uh, against Ben Hadad during that time you are the one whom we need. Wewe uliyetuma neno lako. You who sent your word. Tuma neno hilo pia. Send that word again today. Nasi umetupatia mafundisho haya. And, and you've given us this teaching. Umepumua pumzi hiyo. You have breath that breath. Ili tunene na watu wako. So that we may speak to your people. May the testimonies of the Lord being revealed. Let these people know that God is the Lord. These issues of telling Ben Hadad, oh my Lord, I'm your servant. This what do you mean? Ina maana umeshaambia hiyo miungu kwamba chini ya ulinzi wako. As you're buying down to Ben Hadad, the son of God, you're telling him that I'm your servant. What does that mean? It means that you have already surrendered into his gods and you're telling those gods that I am your servant. Mungu anataka kujitukuza. God wants to glorify himself. Uwezi kumwambia mwana wa miungu kwamba wewe ni bwana wangu, sisi ni watumwa wako. Hiyo tayari ni kwamba ni kama kwa mfano unaacha okovu Unaenda kusujudia roho. You can never tell Mapepo, you can never, never never tell the son of God that I am yours. I am under you. This is like you are worshiping the demons, the powers of darkness. Acha watu wajue kukiri kwako. Let people know your confession. I have no any other God except the God of heaven. The Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ. In that which I'm going through, He is my God. What He has planned for me in my life, it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. 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 Hiyo ilikuwa ni habari njema. That was good news. Nami nina habari njema juu ya mashaka. I have good news upon you. Wewe sio mpanzi. You're not a Wewe ni mwana wa Mungu aliye hai. You are the son of Wewe ni mtu wa destiny. You're a man a person of Kuna destiny. Kuna Mungu mbinguni. There is a God in heaven. Anatakiwa kujivunia maisha yako. Who ought to be proud Anaye of your life. Anaye jua unayoyapitia. Who knows what you're going Anaye through. Anayekuambia. Who is telling Hayo you? Hayo unayoyapitia. What you're going through. Utayatia chini ya miguu yako. You will put them under your feet. Utayatia chini ya miguu yako. You will put them under your feet. Na it's not about tomorrow, it's today. Mufalme akasema. And the king said. Nitawatia leo mikononi mwako. Nawe utajua ya kuwa ndimi buwana. Ahabu akanena kwa nani. Kwa nani? Akasema. Buwana asema hivi. Kwa vijana. Wa maliwali. Wa majimbo. Ndipo akanena. Ni nani atakaye ipanga vita? Alikuwa anafikiria labda. And he told him, I will deliver it into thine hand this day and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And Ahab said, by whom? And he said, that says the Lord, even by the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, who shall order the battle? Sikiliza. Listen. Alivu ambio kwamba ni wale vijana wa kwenye majimbo when he was told that it is by the young men of the provinces ni kama ilimupa matumaini kwamba basi kama watakufa watakufa hao wao it is like he got this hope that oh good if they are going to die it will be those young ones yani kama amulize kwamba jena mimi nitaenda it was like he was about to ask the seven of God will I also go what does the Lord say nani atayanzisha nani atakuwa kwenye front line that's why he had all these questions that who's going to go in the front line because <laughs> he was afraid of his life. Said <laughs> so, no, it will be about the young ones. He was ready to send the youth. But he wanted to make sure that I might also <laughs> go to the youth. But he was afraid to ask straight forward. So he asking, uh, who's going to start the battle? Who's going to be on the front line? <laughs> and the prophet said, it is you. <laughs> When the king was told so, he did not refuse. 
And he said, it is thou. Mfalme akasimama. And the king stood down. Dipo akawaandikia vijana wa maliwali wa majimbo nao walikuwa na mia Then he numbered the young men of the princes of the provinces and they were 232. Kisha baada hao akawaandikia watu wote wana wa Israeli wote wote sio baadhi. And after them he numbered all the people even all the children of Israel not some but all. Watakao ingia vitani. Who were going to battle? Nao walikuwa 1700. And there were 7000. Kumbuka ni mji wa Samaria. Remember this is the city of Samaria. Wakatoka waka, wakatoka wakati wa adhuhuri. Adhuhuri ni asubuhi. Amchana. Amchana. Nun. Eh nun. Eh, nun. Eh, nun. Okay. Eh. Hata ku, kule, kule, kulewa mabandani yeye na wale wafalme 30 na wawili waliomsaidia and they went out of at noon but ben hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions he and his kings the 30 and two kings that helped him unaona gisi walikuwa wamezarau samaria you see how how they despised samaria wametangaza vita they declared war lakini bado wanakunywa pombe yani walisha walisha tangaza ushindi and they were not even prepared uh, anything because they were so sure that we are victors. Kumbe hawajui mchezo umebadilika. Little did they know that the game has changed. Ambe mwenzako mchezo unabadilika. Tell your neighbor the game has changed. Waliendelea kunywa. They continued as usual. Wanajua tu wamesha wamesha wazingira. Knowing that we have besieged them already. Afu mfalme akasema. And the king said. Tokeni nje. Go out. Wakija. If they come. Kwa amani in peace mwachukue walio hai take them alive mwachukue hai take them alive wakija kwa vita if they come to fight maana yake nini what does it mean watakavyojitokeza once they appear hata kama watajitokeza kwa kusema kwamba tumeona hatutaweza hii vita mtusamee bado mwachukue even if they come and say you know what we have discovered that we have realized that we will not be able to fight this battle still take them don't listen wakija kwamba wanakuja kwa vita bado mwachukue kwa hiyo maana yote they come they want to fight take them hata wangeomba msamaha bado hawangesamehe even if they would have asked for forgiveness they would not have been forgiven they would have been captured alikuwa amezarau Samaria he really despised Samaria amezarau mfalme Ahab he despised king Ahab akasema wale vijana wao wakajitokeza and say once those young men they appear kwa habari yote nao waleta wachukueni regardless of anything capture them yani wachukueni mateka yani that capture them unaona hiyo zarau hiyo zarau ndio tunaiambia enough is enough it is that the high level of being despised that's what we are talking to right now to tell it in atosha in atosha in atosha it is enough hallelujah 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 bado wakiwa kwenye hizo pombe zao while they were still drinking and Hawakujua getting drunk how could you have vijana wamekuja little did they know that the young men came ready unaona ule umoja you see the unity mfalme the king na wa 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 wa, wa ma leaders kwa biblia ah. kiingereza wanasema the leaders of the province okay the king and those leaders of the prophet au maakida wa yale majimbo eh. walikuwa kwenye umoja they were in unity mfalme ametangaza vita the king declared war na wale ma leaders wa province and the leaders of the provinces tuseme kama kwa mfano kama ni kanisa wale wakuwa departments uh, in the church we can say that uh, the departmental leaders wote waungane they all unite together na kiongozi wao with their leader kusimama katika hii vita to stand in this battle na wengine and others nao nyuma yao sio kwamba ni wao peke yao they were supporting them behind them they were not alone he wakaja they came wakapiga vita they fought the battle wanajua wanapiga vita na neno la mungu liliachilia juu yao they knew they were fighting the battle while the word of god is supporting them umepata hiyo did you get yesu that? alienda kumfungua yule mga, 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 mgalasi kwa sababu alikuwa anajua kuna neno ilisemwa juu ya huyu ndugu jesus went to deliver the man from gadara because he knew there was a word that was said upon this man na hawa walienda 
vitani kupambana na Ben Haddad yes. wakiwa na neno ambao Mungu alishawaambia kwamba leo tunawatia yeah. chini ya miguu yenu. And these guys went to fight against Ben Haddad ah, having the word say. knowing for sure that the word says today God is going to put him under our feet. Unaipata hiyo? Do you get that? Unaona huo mtiririko? Do you see that flow? Walitembea na neno. They walked with the word. Walitembea na neno. They walked with the word. Hiyo neno iliwapa ushindi. That word gave them victory. Hili neno inasema Mungu hawezi kudanganya. This word says God can Mungu never lie. Mungu alisema leo hii jeshi kubwa ataitia chini ya miguu yetu. This mighty army he shall put it under your feet. Walienda na ushindi tayari so walisha. They went with victory already. Kwa kifaransa wanasema hizo consomme la victoire. Yaani ndani yao tayari wamesha wamesha imeza huo ushindi, wanatembea na hiyo neno, huko wanaenda tu kwenye manifestation. It is that they went there having victory in them, having the word of victory in them. What was happening it was just the issue of manifestation. Ndio hivyo na sisi tunatakiwa kwenda kukabiliana na hayo majitu yanayotufuata tukijua kwamba Mungu alishanena hili na hili. This is how we are supposed to go and face with those giant knowing that the Lord had already said this and that. Mungu amesema kuingia Kanani tutaingia. God said entering to Canaan land we shall enter. Tutaingia. We will enter. Tutaingia. We will enter. Tutaingia kwenye mstakabali. We will enter into our destiny. Na lolote na liwe kuingia tutaingia we will enter hao ndio kwa wana wa kitume this is how you Hivu. become the sons apostolic sons kwamba tutashinda that we will overcome yoyote takao tokea tutashinda whatsoever happens we will bwana yuko pamoja nasi the lord is with us ana tulimuita mungu because we called upon god naye akatusikia and he heard us tukavyo toka kwenye hizi siku 14 once we finish this 14 Twende days twende na tumesha meza ushindi we will go with victory twende kwa ujasiri let's go with confidence tusiangalie majitu let us look, not look at giants tusiangalie wingi let us not look unto the mana multitudes mana bwana sema mmeona wingi wa hayo majitu for the lord say if you have seen the multitudes tawatia chini ya miguu yenu put them under your feet Oh hallelujah. 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 Bijana wa majimbo pamoja na na, na na Samaria nzima. The young men of the princes with the entire city of Samaria. Na wala wakuwa wengi walikuwa 1700. And they were not many, they were 7000. Biblia inasema The Bible says waliangusha waliwapiga watu wa Ben Hadad 100000 100000. They killed 100000 people of Ben Hadad. Hey. Mmeisikia hiyo? Did you hear that? Kumina sita. Wakatoka waka, wakatoka wakati wa adhuhuri. Ndio hiyo niliambia Yesu alitushindia pia mchana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh, yeah. mchana a, 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 wanasema hadharani kwa kinyume wao. They, they went at noon. That's when we know that Jesus even overcame during noon time in the open. Wazi wazi. Lakini Ben Hadad alikuwa akinywa hata kulewa mabandani ye na wale wafalme wake 30 na wawili waliomsaidia wote ni walevi wakatoka wale vijana na mali wali wa majimbo wakatangulia na Ben Hadad akatuma watu nao akawaambia wako watu wametoka katika Samaria akasema alituma watu wakakuta kweli vijana wameshuka akasema kwamba wametoka kwa amani wakamateni wa, wa, wa hai na kwamba wametoka kwa vita wakamateni wa hai basi wakatoka mjini hao vijana wa maliwali wa majimbo na jeshi nyuma yao kumbe nimeshajua kusoma Kiswahili wakapiga kila mmoja mtu wake wakashami wakakimbia na Israeli wakawafuatia Beni Hadad mfalme wa Shaum akaokoka amepanda farasi pamoja na wapandao farasi aka akakimbia yani akaokolewa aka na hiyo kifo ambayo ilikuwa ime, imekuja kwa ajili yake but Ben Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilion he and his kings the 30 and two kings that helped him they were all drunkards and the young men of the princes of the provinces went out first and Ben Hadad sent out so he sent out and they told him saying there are men come out of Samaria and he said whether they become out of peace take them alive or whether they come out of for, for war take them alive so the young men of the princes of the province came out of the city and the army which followed them and they slew every one his man and the Syrians fled and Israel pursued them and Ben Hadad the king of Syria escaped on an horse with the horsemen Unaona hiyo aliyomwambia mfalme. You see that which the king told him. Anayevaa vazi asijivune kabla hajavua. 
Mshangilie bwana kwa hiyo mse. He told him that the one who's putting on the armor should not boast before he puts them out. Mfalme wa Israeli akatoka akawapiga farasi na magari. Akawapiga washami pigo kubwa. Naye yule nabii eh eh And the king of Israel went out and smote the horses and the chariots and slew the Syrians with a great slaughter. Mshangilie bwana. Clap your hands for the Lord. Uone Mungu akiingilia kati bena adadi anavyokimbia. Jamani you see, when nili, God nilipokuwa nasoma nilikuwa nacheka mwenyewe. Would, I, while I was reading I was laughing out myself. <laughs> Wakapata wao ushindi wa kwanza. They got that first victory. Kabla hawajatulia. Before they settled. Nabii akaja akawaambia. The prophet came and told. Bwana anasema hivi. The Lord is saying. Musistare. Don't rest. Ben Hadad hatapumua mpaka atakavorudi. Ben Hadad will still come back again. Sikiliza. Listen. Ben Hadad haondoki kihivyo. Ben Hadad will not leave you easy. Nabii akasema anavoenda anaenda kujipanga. The prophet said as he is going he is going to array and is going to pull up his strength. And you also strength gather your strength again. Tell your neighbor do not be satisfied with a single victory. When you see you are getting a victory. Don't relax and say ah Ben Hadad ran away and then you are making stories. Mpepee bwana Yesu. Amen. Mpepee bwana Yesu. Nabii akasema sasa ni muda wa kujipanga. And the prophet said now it's time to gather strength. Hakika, indeed. Watu wa Ben Hadad. People of Ben Hadad. Wakaenda wakasema, sikia hii msemo. They went and say listen to what they say. Akasema unajua. Say you know. Huyu Mungu wa Israeli, this God of Israel, ni Mungu wa milimani. He is a God of the mountains. Ndio maana wametushinda. That's why they overcame Kujipange us. Tujipange upya. Let us uh, strength gather our Kusi strength again. Tusiwavamie milimani. No no, let's not follow them on Tuende the mountain. Tuende tupambane nao kwa bondeni. Let us fight them on the valley. Maana Mungu Mungu wa milimani, Mungu wa Israeli. Because the God of Israel is a God of the mountains. Unasikia? Do you hear that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wakaenda wakajipanga upya. They went and gather strength again. Nabii akashuka. And the prophet came. Akawaambia. And he told them. Bwana asema hivi. The Lord says this. Wao wanajua nimewashinda maana mimi ni Mungu wa milimani. They know they think that I have overcame them because I'm the God of mountains. Now together we strength. Nenda kushuka niwashindie vita wajue kwamba Mungu sio wa milimani tu na ni Mungu wa bondeni. I'm going to come and win the battle for you that they may know that God is not the only the God, God is not only the God of the mountain but he is also the God of the valley. Mungu wa Israeli sio wa milimani tu. God of Israel is not the God of the mountains only. Not only of the valleys. If, if the enemy follows us on the mountain, God will win for us. If the enemy comes to the valley, the Lord will come to the valley with us. Ben Hadad said, now we are going to battle again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to the valley now. That battle ilikuwa ya ajabu sana. It was such an amazing battle. Bwana aliwashindia Israeli vita. The Lord overcome for Israel. Majeshi ya Ben Hadad wakafa and the armies of Ben Hadad were killed. Na waliobaki wakatoroka wakakimbia. And those who remained they ran away. Ben Hadad akashikwa. And Ben Hadad was captured. Umeifata hiyo? Did you get that? <laughs> Alikimbia He ran away. Sio kama mwanzoni. Not like it was before. Alivokimbia. When he ran away. Akajificha. He he he, 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 he alishikwa namna gani? He went hide and how did they get him? Alikuwa hawezi kuchomoa hata kichwa. He could not even take out his head. Wamekuwa sasa ndio watumwa. Now the game has changed. They have become the slaves. Sikiliza adui. Listen. Yaani mimi nimeanza kuelewa kwa nini Yesu anasema watch and pray. Now I have started to understand why Jesus is saying kesheni muombe. Wale mabaki waliobaki. The remnant. Wale ma ma advisors. Those advisors. Wakamwambia. They told him. Sasa tunakuwa watumwa. Now we are becoming slaves. Hao watu wanaonekana wana nguvu juu yetu. These people looks like they're so strong over us. To change strategy. Let us change the strategy. 
Maana tumesikia because we have heard kwamba mfalme na watu wake that the king and his people ni watu wa huruma sana these are people who are full of mercy wana rehema they are merciful to change mchezo let us change the game mfalme asa eh mnafanyaje the king said hey, how are you going to do it tutaenda tumejifunga funga yani kama watumwa we will go there wrapping yani up ourselves tu, like tu, slaves tu, very weak people tulete ishara kwamba wakituona watu hurumie let us uh, create an atmosphere whereby when they see us they will have mercy upon us watch and pray kesheni na muombe ukiona adui ananyenyekea nyenyekea ni kama yuko tayari kwa lolote ile when you see when you see the enemy is humbling <laughs> himself pamba no kwanza rohoni kabla kwenda haraka like he's ready for anything you have to discern in the spirit before you make a decision wakaenda they went kwa heshima nyingi with great honor wakasema and they say sisi ni watumwa wako we are your servants sisi ni watumwa wako we are your servants please listen na mtumwa wako ben adad and your servant ben adad anasema he saying umuokoe save him mfalme akasema he and the king said what bado yuko hai he is still alive yuko hai he is alive Mashimoni huko amejificha. He's hiding somewhere in the holes. Bena dada alivoona ile mazarao. Nani mfalme Ahabu alivoona ile mazarao ya Bena dada. And when King Ahab saw this level of despising him from Bena dada. Yule ni ndugu yangu. And he said, "Well, he is my brother." Nenda muambie. Go tell him. Niko tayari kumuokoa. I am ready to serve him. Lakini aje kwanza. But he should come first. <laughs> aje kwanza. Let him come first. Aje let him come. Asitume salamu kwa mbali. He should not send this uh, message from my father. I want to see him first. Fikiria Ben Haddad alivyokuwa ametiwa chini. Now think how Ben Haddad was placed under the feet. Wakasema tumeona kwenye uso wake. And they went and say we saw in his face. Kama kuna ishara ya rehema like fulani. Like there's a sign of mercy. Na amesema. And he said. Huyo ni ndugu yangu. This is my brother. Wache aje. Let him come wakaenda kaambia kweli ndugu yako Ben Haddad anasema yuko tayari kuja aje they sent the message say yes your brother Ben Haddad says that i'm ready to come should he come mwambie aje tell him to come Ben Haddad akashuka and Ben Haddad came <laughs> mfalme Ahab alivoona now when king Ahab saw this akakamata chariot yake and he took his chariots mpe chariot na give him also his Aje chariot. chariot yangu let him come to my chariot so that we can discuss ben adada kaingia kwenye chariot ben adada entered into another chariot and he was brought akasema mfalme he said oh my lord chini ya miguu yako under your feet kwa kuwa umeniokoa because you have saved me nitarejesha hayo miji yote ambayo tulikuwa tumewachukulia i will restore all the cities that i have captured from you na kama hivyo unajua walikuwa wanaenda wanatia masoko yao samaria wanatia vituo vyao sokoria basi na nyinyi mtafanya hivyo hata kwa Syria mtakuwa na market zenu huko na miji yenu tulio baba yangu aliyowaibia nitairudisha your cities that my father had captured i will restore them mfalme Ahab akasema and i have said okay sawa basi tuandikiane Let us put it in Tuwe writing. Let us have some agreement. Wakati, wakati ayo, ni, so they put ni, the agreement down. Eh, wakafanya kama ni treaty ni nini? Kama, uh, eh? like a contract or like Ni kama a, mkataba fulani wa makubaliano. Sort of an agreement. Nikuulize swali. Let me ask you a question. Hiyo ilimpa Mungu utukufu au? Did, did that glorified God or kwa sababu Mungu amekushindia unataka kufikiri ni wewe umeshinda Because unakamata God, chariot yako unatia mwana wa miungu ndani ya chariot ili aje mkubaliane unakubaliana nini Because God has overcome for you then you are taking the son of God you're putting him in your chariot so that you may agree what do you are you guys, are you guys going to agree in Watch and pray. Kesheni, kiomba. Kuna vitu vingine tusitumie akili. The other things let's not use our brain. Vita vya kiroho tusitumie akili. Spiritual battles don't use your Unaweza brain. Unaweza kuwa ni warehema nyingi. You could be a person of Lakini adui anaichukulia hiyo kama udhaifu ili akuvamie tena. Would take that as a weakness so that he can attack you again. 
Unavyosoma unaweza una kwamba amefanya kitu kizuri. When you read you may see as if he has done a very good thing. Mungu si ni Mungu wa amani jamani. Because God is a God of peace. Na mtu amenyenyekea atarejesha hiyo miji yote. This person has humbled himself that is going to return all the cities. kama anasema ukweli. Who did you tell, what assurance do you have that the person is speaking the wakasaini, truth? Wakasaini. They signed the treaty. Wana wa watu akarudi. Benadad akarudi kwa amani. Benadad left. Nabii mmoja akajitokeza. And one prophet came. Akaambia mtu mwingine nipige. And told another person hit me. Eh, mtu akakataa. And this person refused. Alivyokataa akamwambia unavyokataa sauti ya Bwana The way you refuse the voice of the Lord Kwenye nje yako simba atakurarua Then along your way the lion will devour Naikawa hivyo And it was so Kwa hiyo akamwambia mtu wa pili nipige He told the second person hit me Akampiga And he hit him Kidonda kikakatika And then Kidonda akampiga akacha And then there was a wound Kwa hiyo nabii akajifunga And the prophet I had to bind that wound. Akaenda akamsubiri Ahad mfalme Ahab njiani. And waited for King Ahab along the way. Akamwambia mfalme. He told, "Oh king, uishi milele. Live forever." Akaambia, "He." Say, "He." Akasema, "Nilivyoumia hivi." And say the way I'm hurt. Tulivyokuwa vitani. While we were in the battle. Mtu mmoja akaniambia chunga huyu mtu asikuepuke. Somebody told me that take care of this person that he may not run away from you. Usitoe macho kwake. Do not remove your eyes from him. Lakini tulivyokuwa vitani nika But while we were in the battle I forgot myself kakimbia. and the person ran away. Sasa nilivomwenda yule mtu. Now when I went to that person Akasema kwa kwa umemwachilia huyo mtu. So because you let him go Na wewe ndio umezuba. And you are the one it was your fault. Wewe utakufa kwa niaba yake. You are the one who will die on his behalf. Mfalme alivomwangalia akasema eh And the king looked at him and said what? Hivyo, hivyo and it will be so like the way you're saying. Kwa sababu umezuba because you have maisha yako yanaondoka kwa niaba huyo mtu you have delayed in the life your life is going to be taken away on behalf of that person hiyo, and bandage. the prophet removed the bandage mfalme akamkuta ni yeye and the, the king discovered that it was him akasema ha sema bwana oho says the lord ulivyo mwachilia ben hadad the way you let ben hadad go ukazuba and then you are just bwana anasema the lord is saying maisha yako ndio yataondoka kwa niaba that's how your life is going to be na mimi nakwambia and i'm telling you watch and pray kesha omba adui ana vitu vingi ana ana mdanganyifu mwingi sana is so tricky ana udanga yani nikwambie kwamba He's bila maombi and i tell you something without prayer adui atatupiga mitego ya ajabu sana the enemy will trap us alimtamkia mambo magumu sana he spoke such hard words ana mungu anakunyanganya ufalme mungu so god is taking away the kingdom from you ukaendelea kusoma when you continue to read ingawa haiko kwenye topic yetu even though it's not in our topic mfalme ahabu alienda akakaa akalia chini mbele za mungu akavua nguo akavaa ma, magunia akaanza kuomba msamaha kalitia jina la bwana king ahab returned unto the lord he went and prayed and repented and put on sackcloth and sought the face of the lord mungu akatuma nabii mwingine god sent another prophet mwende mumwambie ahab kwa sababu amenyenyekea go tell ahab because he has ameomba na kufunga he has prayed and fasted amevaa magunia he has put on a sackcloth hiyo calamity niliyokuwa nimetamka then the calamity i spoke over him hataiona wakati akiwa hai he will not see it in his life kwa sababu Mungu alijua Jezebel bado iko atamu influence kwenye mambo mabaya. Because God knew Jezebel is still alive, she will influence him in evil things. Lakini ninavyosema, but as I say, hata kama ulitenda maovu, even if you did evil, ndio muda wa wa kulitia jina la Bwana. This is a time to call upon the name of the Lord. muda wa kuja. This is a time to come. Nyenyeke kwa ma East Wind Ministries. Seeking God to impart nations.